Hey folks, Quillyteen here and welcome to Let's Play some Port Royale 4! The Port Royale franchise and its sister franchises like uh, Patrician and Rise of Venice for example. Some of my favorite games, they are naval trading business sim tycoon -y kind of affairs. Um, this video is sponsored by Calypso, the publisher, and actually technically sort of the parent company of the development group that have uh, worked in Port Royale uh, for a few iterations. They've also the same company that worked in things like Tropico, for example. Um, lots of really good stuff. Some of our favorite games coming out of there. Do make sure to check the links and information down in the description box for uh, some relevant info and where you can get this game. Now, there is a fully comprehensive tutorial. There's also a campaign mode over here, and you can play as one of four different nations. The campaign will have um, basically a series of missions and objectives to kind of lead you into a certain direction. Now, I'm going to skip, or I'm not going to do the campaign here because I don't want to spoil anything for you guys if you jump into the game. There's some, some interesting little story and some voiceovers and things that happen when you kick in. Instead, I'm going to go into the free game mode over here, which still has the possibility of playing with various objectives. We've got a number of different nations we can play as. We can play as England, France, Spain, or the Netherlands. Um, I was thinking we might play as Spain, just because that's, um, hmm, I don't know. Hmm. So England have reduced construction cost for military frigates and ship of the line, fast working shipyards. That sounds pretty good. France got reduced construction cost for buildings. It's bricks required. Faster increase of workers and citizens. This is really quite nice. Uh, cheap vessels that don't have a lot of cannons and more housing. You know, how about we play as the Dutch? I'm gonna do that. Seems like an okay idea. Um, every nation also has a couple of unique ships. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Uh, you can also, you can customize your flag, which is kind of nice. I kind of wish they had a, a green background, because that's normally what I play as. I think we'll go as blue over here. Um, with, uh, there we go, we'll be a barrel full of monkeys here. Now, there are four different character archetypes you can play as. There's the adventurer here. Uh, very potent having your captains gain increased experience because captain experience levels are incredibly important. Uh, the merchant saves a crazy amount of money by not having to buy trade licenses. So to have the right to trade with various towns, you have to buy a trade license. And they start off fairly cheap, but they quickly scale up and, uh, they become pretty intimidating. Also, being able to trade with nations, even people you're at war with, is surprisingly useful. Uh, we've got the Buccaneer here. The Buccaneer is really the sort of person you want to go to if you want to do legal piracy. So a letter of mark lets you basically be a pirate against nations that your own country's at war with. So if we're playing as the Netherlands and we're at war with England, um, then I can get her a letter of mark so that I can legitimately attack uh, English merchant ships and, and steal their stuff and things. And not only am I going to be allowed to do it, but I will actually get fame for doing so. The Buccaneer also starts with some f extra frame points at the start, which is really powerful. Now, if they decide to do straight up piracy, they do take a double loss of fame. So legitimate piracy, okay. Illegal piracy, not so much. Yeah, you know, these things happen. We've also got the Piratess over here. Uh, she is immune from pirate attacks because I guess she's one of them. And she le loses less fame for doing piracy stuff. Uh, and that is the four. I feel like we might do the Buccaneer on this run just to mix it up. We'll call ourselves uh, Quill Vaughn 18? Van 18. Uh, I don't know. Can't remember which one it is for the Duchies. We'll go Quill Vaughn 18. Uh, so there we go. Let's load in. We've got some various settings we can tune, so you can change the size of your starting nation from small all the way to large. Now, the difference, the different nations will have different balances and different starting positions. Uh, there's different configurations. Netherlands over here, I think we'll start on regular, and it'll be basically an even distribution. So the English are going to be to our southeast. Uh, the French, ooh, very tiny area just to our west. And Spain is going to hold a lot of other things. We can go and choose some different randomizations. I mean, I think zero is a little closer to some of the historical placements, so we'll do that. Now, a very important thing that you're going to have to do is choose your hometown here. So your hometown is the one that you're going to start off being the administrator of, and you're going to have full control over that town. You will be able to become the administrator of multiple towns as you continue through the game here, but your start's pretty important. Uh, we've got Andrew selected now, and you know what? I like that. It's very nice and central. Oh, I think that's swell. Yeah, I'm used to playing as a uh, Spain in my little practice games here. And so starting, you know, anywhere on the coast over here, it's fairly linear in both directions. Being centralized is going to be really, really, really handy. If ever we find ourselves in a war against France, we should go for the Florida Keys right away. That sounds swell to me. 
in the interest of time, I will start with the most stirred in gold and vessels. Um, it doesn't necessarily make the game easier so much as just faster to get kickstarted over here. So I'm going to do that. Now, despite the fact that we're in free play mode and not a campaign, the game will give you objectives. Uh, you can have them be military focused, economy focused, or maybe you don't want any tasks whatsoever. Um, I will leave it on mixed. So hopefully we get a good sampling of the experience resources as well. We'll leave it on even distribution, but it's nice how many options there are here for your map, which is going to give you a lot more replay value. So between what nation you play as, which archetype for your character you've got, and then all these settings, it's going to feel pretty dramatically on future playthroughs. Discover towns. So um, if you have this on, what's going to happen is you're only going to know the towns that belong to your starting nation at the start. Um, and you have to actually just discover the towns with the ship to be able to spot them. Um, I'm going to leave it off again, sort of in the interest of speed. It doesn't actually take that much work to send a ship puttering around to, to spot everything, but I think it'll look a little nicer for us if we do this. Level difficulty, we'll leave it on regular. That sounds okay to me. And let's get it started. Now, if you've never played any of these games before, don't worry, we'll try to do a wee bit of a recap over it. Oh my gosh, right away we get an event. Um, oh, it's interesting. The year is slightly different than the last time I loaded up the free play. Last time I loaded up free play, it was 1604, um, but it may have been who I picked or something. I'm not sure. So uh, we're starting off right away with one of the Pope deaths. All right, let's pause here. So you can see you do get world events that happen as the game progresses, which is kind of nice. So here's the game map. We can zoom in and take a look at various things. We can take a look at our town. In fact, there's going to be a lot of things we're going to do in our town here with these little hexes as we go. Basically, via this construction menu, we're going to interact with a lot of this. So look at, take a look at this. We've got 15 different, these are business buildings, and we've got another big slew of town buildings that you can do as well. Um, there are a large number of tradable resources. Scroll down the game, there's a list here. These are all the resources you can trade in. Um, there's a there's a lot to do in this game. So we're gonna try to tackle this a little bit at a time in case you are a bit new to the situation. So you are playing a character who has been assigned to be the, the administrator of a town here in the Caribbean. By the way, where I'm from, we, we say Caribbean. You can say Caribbean if you prefer, it's not wrong. It's fine. I'm just going to say Caribbean because that's what I grew up with. I'm sure YouTube comments will still be filled with arguments about which way is most correct, but um, I don't care. <laughs> All right. So Andrus is where we started. We've got this town. We're in charge of that. So we are we are ward of our nation here of the Netherlands. And there is a viceroy, a vice king that has been assigned to look over the, uh, the this region. And for us, it just so happens that our Viceroy is set up inside of Port Royal itself. So you can see the little crown over here. That's the Viceroy's town. Now, it's important to know where the Viceroy's town is because one of the big tasks that you're going to have in the game is to send the goodies from the Caribbean back to the homeland, back to the Netherlands. And that is done through the Viceroy's capital. So Port Royal in our particular example here. If I click on the Viceroy button over here and I go to the Fame tab, uh, you can see there's a few things going on. So there's this sort of fame meter. You can earn fame points by doing various activities. And every time the meter fills up, you will get a new fame point. So you earn fame and that leads to fame point. Because we are Buccaneer, we started with five extra fame points at the start, which is going to be very handy for us. Here you can see the goods that the, um, that the Dutch want. They want to be sent cotton, tobacco, coffee, and cacao. And if we go and drop these goods off to Port Royal, first of all, we will be paid for that. There will be demand in Port Royal for these resources. So we will be paid. In addition to that, we will earn fame back home, which we can then use to get concessions from the Viceroy, which will give us more power and options in the game. We'll talk about applying for town administration later on, but we can take over more towns if we want. The Viceroy will occasionally give us tasks over here as well. Um, there's no need to come in here to accept them. They're automatically accepted. Uh, there's no, as far as I know, there's no penalty to not doing it, but if you do complete these tasks, then you do get a variety of bonuses. Uh, we can see if we're at war or anything. We are not. We actually currently have an ally, an alliance with the English here. And in fact, it doesn't look like anyone is at war with anyone. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll also keep a sharp eye on the pirate screen because not only can we do piracy, piracy but we will also run into enemy pirates who are going to want to go and steal our stuff. Yeah, more on that in a bit. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the first few steps. So we've got Andros over here. If we click on the town, we can look. There's so much information over here, but don't let it overwhelm you. The big thing is each of these towns have a population. The population can rise or decrease. We want our town's population to increase because we get more options 
the more population there is in town. Mostly it means we'll have more workers, more job seekers that we can employ in our businesses. Um, the town's population will generally climb if we have high satisfaction of the inhabitants. And the best way to ensure that the inhabitants are satisfied is to make sure they've got a steady supply of all the commodities that they would like. So if we take a look at over here, this is the trade screen, we can see all the goods that are in the game and some goods getting consumed. For example, grain is getting consumed every single day in this town, which makes sense. People got to eat. Now, this town happens to produce grain. You can see the plus 24 over here. We can also see a little gear over here. This means that there's a production of this resource in this town. So that's going to be okay. But the people also want fruit. They want to eat two units of fruit per day, and this town doesn't produce any. If they run out, or even right now, as they're running low, this can lead to reduced supply of commodities, which will upset people, which will mean that they will leave or at very least that the town won't grow. So we would like to get some fruit into this town. Uh, there's no current demand for wood, but this is needed for a lot of construction. So we're going to need that as well and so on and so forth. And so the question is, hey, of our neighbors, where can I get some of this stuff? If I hold alt. First of all, we see all these like prevailing trade winds. Oh my God. Very, very cool display. But what I actually want to highlight is the fact that for each one of these towns, there is production listed below this. Every town in this game can ultimately produce up to seven distinct goods. At the start, though, a lot of them don't have that. In fact, I don't think any of them have a full seven. You can see that Cat Island and Florida Keys are doing three each. Nassau is doing four. Uh, Grand Bahama is doing six right out of the box, which is pretty impressive. So if we look around here, we can see um, this is vegetables. Oh, fruit at Cat Isle Island. Okay, so Cat Island actually produces fruit, cotton, as well as, I think that's porcelain? Ceramics, ceramics. Produces ceramics. So these are all things that are not being produced in our capital of Andros. So it seems like it would be a pretty good idea to get some resources from Cat Island. Now, we've got some money right now. We're going to go ahead. We're going to grab one of our ships. So we have one convoy, one fleet. This fleet has three vessels in it. We started with three vessels. This They all got put into one convoy. You can split them up or recombine them in any way whatsoever. You never control one ship directly, although you could have a convoy of one ship, so that's perfectly okay. In fact, I think I might do a little bit of splitting up right now. Let's do that. If I go and click on the lighthouse in town here, I can reorganize things. So I'm going to have uh, Island Soul. My convoy called Island Soul is going to have two schooners. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new convoy with a standalone one over there. And so now at the top, I can see a number of free convoys. These are convoys not assigned to automated trade routes here. So right now, they're just unassigned, and that's going to be okay. Over here in Andros, I'm going to go to the trade window. So I have one of my convoys selected. So in the trade window here, I can now purchase goods and load them onto my convoy. Which goods should I purchase? Well, what you want to do, obviously, is buy low, sell high. If you're going to get better prices, the more abundant a good is in a town. And that's what these symbols over here mean. The more green bars are filled out, the more abundant the product is in this town. It kind of makes sense, and you would expect the products that the town is producing to, generally speaking, be something that is in a certain amount of abundance. Um, so what we're going to do here for the grain, I'm just going to go and drag this over until the price starts to climb. You see how the, the price in the bottom left corner of this little window starts to increase as I go to the right at a certain point. So it's 43, and then at a certain point, it starts to go up, and that's... Um, that coincides with when the green bars go from two down to one. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically buy as much as we can while they're on two green bars. So we're going to buy about 66 units of that. Uh, let's get ourselves some beer. Same thing. Ooh, I can actually fill the complete cargo hold of this with beer. That sounds like a great time. So the cargo hold of this ship is completely full. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to send it over to Cat Island. I'm going to try to sell this stuff, hopefully. And then I'm going to try to buy as much fruit as, as possible and anything else I can get my hands on. So this ship is going to go there. What I'm going to do then with my second uh, convoy is I'm also going to trade in Andros. I'm going to buy some more. Uh, let's start with some brick. Ooh, we actually don't have a lot of brick to spare, which makes sense. Bricks are used all the time because of construction projects. Uh, it's actually quite nice that we have brick production in our starting city. That's going to make our life a lot easier because a ton of buildings need wood and brick to be produced. So now we only have to worry about getting some wood production online. Um, ooh, there's tons and tons of cacao here, which is great for making money. This is also one of the four goods that we want to send back to Europe. So trading with our um, with our Viceroy and selling the cocoa 
will be, or the cacao, will be a great way to get more fame. So what I might do with this ship is send it towards Port Royal, but we may as well get it to stop along the way. Let's ha go to uh, Puerto Padre first, and then see where we can go from that point. So both of my little convoys are, are out and about doing some work. That's great. Andros. Ah, uh, okay. So Andros is still too small to have an actual shipyard. So I can't build or purchase ships over here. I can repair them, but that's about it. So if I want more ships, and I think I kind of would, what I'm going to do, I know that Port Royal is going to be a bigger town. Um, these pips over here, by the way, they uh, indicate the population. For every thousand population, you get a pip. I, I mean, unless I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what this represents. Um, every every thousand population sort of kind of is is connected to certain sets of buildings and upgrades and things as well. So um, that's why those pips are pretty indicative of stuff. But one of the things, for example, is with a high enough population, it means that, in fact, we've got a large shipyard over here. Technically, you can only build it in towns that have at least 6,000 inhabitants uh, normally, but the Viceroy City is, I believe, guaranteed to start with one. I've never seen it not start with one, so I suspect that's the case. Um, sometimes, and indeed that's the case, you can just buy ships as is. It's actually sometimes slightly cheaper to commission a ship um, it does require that there's construction material available, and it takes some amount of time. So, uh, building a new ship from scratch isn't necessarily always what you want. Whereas over here, by you're buying some used ships, and you don't have to worry about getting material here or anything like that. It's just ready to go. Um, in Port Royal, we've got a couple of schooners waiting. We've got a single sloop. We've got a couple of brigs, a couple of barks, three lights, lights. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. We've got a good selection of ships to choose from. Um, these ships here are very large. 500 capacity on the... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to call them flights. I don't know. 500 capacity on the flights, which is double every other type of ship. In fact, mo even more so than the schooners. It's 2.5 times more than that. Um, they don't, they're not the fastest speed 10. They're not the most maneuverable either, but they've got great capacity. I mean, if you compare the barks, 250 capacity, they've got a maintenance of 140. It's only 20 gold more per day for the flight, and it can hold twice as much. One of the downsides of these is their draft is a little deeper. This is how deep in the water the ship sits, which affects how quickly it can go over certain shallow areas. Like these shallows over here, they go slower, so you're going to have to be a little bit more aware of things. What's interesting, though, is this area between the islands, we really don't have to worry very much about those shallows. I think I am, in fact going to go and purchase I'm tempted to purchase both I have to save some money for some trade licenses though I'm going to purchase one for now I don't want both we'll see so right now it's just sitting in the harbor it doesn't cost us any maintenance while it's sitting there but I'm going to go ahead and make a new convoy oh, it's called Stardust that sounds lovely now what I'd like this new convoy to do is buy some resources out of Port Royal but we're going to see here I actually can't trade in Port Royal and the reason is I don't have a trade license if I'd chosen the merchant background, I would have a free trade license everywhere. As such, I've got to pay. Now, the first few are only 10,000 gold. I mean, we don't have that much cash right now, but it's still very manageable. So I'll purchase that, and we can now trade in Port Royal. So I'll do that. I'll purchase some more goods. And soon we got to start selling some things. I'm going to purchase some sugar and some beer and some rum. Don't mind that. Uh, you also make coffee, which is interesting. Because normally I would be shipping it over here, and we probably still will. That is a lot of coffee I can purchase without it running dry. All right, let's do it. And I'm now full. Okay, that's going to be that. So this fleet here, I'm going to send them to something to Santiago. Although I am going to have to buy more trade licenses to do that. Get the speed up to three over here and zoom out, which increases the speed as well, which is kind of a neat mechanic. And there we go. We've got a ship waiting for us here. We've got a new task from the Viceroy. In our town's commodity, fruits has been in short supply for a long time, while Spain has it in stock. So what our Viceroy wants us to do is buy Spanish fruit and deliver it to our towns. I don't think we're in a position to do that right now. Um, that is, first of all, buying 300 units of fruit would be quite expensive. Whether we could find it or not, I don't know. I think we might just ignore it for now. But this ship has landed in Padre, or Puerto Padre. I'm going to buy a trade license. We're going to do a lot of these trade licenses to start off with here. And look at that. So they don't have any bricks whatsoever. So we can sell those for decent money. They would like some amount of beer as well. Um, yeah, somewhere around there. Sell as much as we can while still making a little bit of a profit. 
and we'll sell some of the cocoa here as well. All right, and we got that. Now, obviously, all this selling like this can be a little bit, a little bit micro intensive, right? Clearly. Um, oh, did I pause? There we go. I did pause. So maybe you don't want to go and deal with all these, all this individual trading. I actually like trading quite a bit. I think it's fun, the manual trading in particular. But you don't want to do it with all your ships that you own. That would be crazy. Oh, I got to sell some stuff first. Like, why can't I buy? Yeah, because your ship is full, you derp. So, a little bit of this. Uh, that's not going to give us much room for fruit here. Fewer sales available than expected. Um, but let's uh, let's send you to, to Nassau and see what we can do there as well. What we're going to do is we're definitely going to set up some automated trade. In fact, we might just set up a little trading triangle with Nassau, Andros, and Cat Island right away. We've got a little ship with 200 capacity. Um, it's not much. We could always expand it later on, but I actually think that's going to be a great start. So let's set up an automated trade route instead of doing it manually over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the trade route screen, which you can get to from here or from the top button. We're going to create a new trade route, and I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to add Nassau as the first destination, then Andros, then Cat Island. Yeah. So we're going to have this, this little ship, 200 capacity. It's going to constantly patrol between these, and we're going to want it to buy and sell certain things. Now, how do we do that? Well, in Nassau, uh, for example, there is corn, there is coffee, there's a few other things. But one would assume what we're probably going to want to do is purchase things that Nassau produces. So you can see a little gear here produces corn. We probably want to buy that. Um, we might want to buy the rope and so on and so forth. Look, give me one second for this. We've got this. What we probably want to do is sell things here that we've picked up in other places. For example, um, Nassau doesn't produce beer, but we are collecting beer from some places. So what we might want to do is set a command to sell. Now, with all these, we can set certain um, numbers. For example, maybe I want to make sure that we, we always buy 100 units of corn, if at all possible, and I'm willing to pay any price. Or maybe I'm willing to pay up to, you know, 60 gold per unit of corn. You can put all these in, but you can also just let your ship captain handle it for you. Um, this will automatically purchase a reasonable, up to a reasonable demand. It's not going to strip the city bare. Um, it's also not going to purchase once prices get beyond a certain point. You might be able to squeeze a couple of bits of, you know, optimization if you did all your trades manually, but you would go crazy doing that because later on in the game, you're going to have like a, maybe a couple dozen convoys um, operating out there. It's going to be crazy busy. You can't possibly manage them all. And in fact, even doing each one of these like by hand to set up, you know, the buy sells and things is a little bit annoying. So what can you do for that? Well, there's a button in the top left corner here. If you've got anything selected, it says all off. You click, it just sets everything to off. But if everything is off, so again, all off. If everything is off, there's this button that says standard. You click this, what it does is it sets everything that a town produces to buy and everything else to sell with everything except to automatic. This 99% of the time is probably what you're looking to do. So I'm gonna just do that for all three of these stops. We're just gonna automatically go buy what the stop produces and sell what they don't. If the production of a town changes, if you set up a new business, you will probably have to go and update your, your trade list. But you know, that's just part of, that's just part of doing business. So we're good with that. One thing I do want to point out when you set these routes, you can actually go and set manual waypoints as well. And there is some value to this. For example, you might want to take advantage. I just realized we're going in the reverse direction to take best advantage of these trade winds. So first of all, let's reorder this because you can see there's a clockwork sort of like current, like wind and, and water current over here. So we would be best going in the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do after you stop in Nassau, um, then you're going to go to Cat Island. There we go. So Andros is desperately waiting for things. It's not ideal right now that we're doing things in this order. Actually, what I could do is... There you go. If I do this, it'll go to Andros first, which is convenient because that's kind of what we want. Um, then, then to Nassau and then to Cat Island. So it's going to be in this clockwise direction. That's looking really great. So this is a trade route was created. There are currently no convoys assigned to it because you can assign any number of convoys to a trade route. Let's uh, the Aventurine convoy over here with the one little ship. That sounds great. I'm just going to go ahead and assign a route right over here. If you do have multiple convoys on a route, you might want to hit distribute convoys. This ensures that they spread themselves out. 
For a short route like this, I don't think it makes much sense to have multiple convoys. Um, the towns simply aren't going to refresh quickly enough really to make it worthwhile. But for very long trips, absolutely. Um, this became really important in one of my games where, um, actually in the Spanish campaign, Seville is your, your personal hometown. But the Viceroy's town is way over here in Maracaibo, at least when I was playing it. Um, and that's a huge trip. So if you're constantly making that, the long trip, you know, a couple of convoys was maybe a good idea because uh, by the time the second one arrives, it's probably all we refresh. So that's one little trade route happening. By the way, um, the colors of these, the red outline means I have building rights. I can build an Andros. Um, and not only that, the fact that it's filled in means that I'm the administrator of this town. So I can actually build all the town buildings as well. The blue uh, border here means I have a trading license. And then these guys are... Uh, not places I'm allowed to interact with at this time. All right, we can unpause again. That's going to be great. We've got a ship sitting in Santiago. I think we're going to do something fairly similar here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a trade license in Baracoa. That's probably my last one for 10,000. Um, and what I'm going to do is on the Stardust, which is just a single flight, I'm going to create a new trade route. We're going to have it go... Um, why not? I don't have a trade license in Santiago. There we go. Because when you try to assign, uh, oops, um, there you go, trade route two. When you try to you're assigning towns, only towns that you have trade rights with show up here. The others are hidden. Just you know, keep it clean. So that's why I noticed that. So we're gonna go Santiago, Baracoa, Puerto Padre, land in Andros, and then I think just do the inverse. I think that's going to be okay. And in fact, you know what? Why don't you go and throw Port Royal in there as well? There we go. Something like this. Just hitting everything. That's going to be okay. A little bit of shallow ground there. Right. Uh, here you can see the, uh, the duration expected. So um, here, ships with the uh, shallowest draft, so that don't go deep into the water, will take about 10 days. The ones with the deepest draft and have to work hardest in the shallow terrain will take 12 and a half days. Um, if you click and drag with these waypoints, sometimes you can find slightly idealized routes. That's not gonna happen here because either way, we have to go through the shallow territory, but there might be some other places you can do. You can also use that to take advantage of some of these wind currents sometimes and plan explicit routes. I think that's gonna be okay. We'll just go ahead and set up all the trades on all these bad boys. Boom, 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 boom. This is a fairly involved route, a lot of stops, so there's a little bit of extra clicking going on. We'll confirm that. And then I'm going to assign Stardust to this route. So now I only have one free convoy. That's the only convoy that is not automated currently. That's Island Soul here, and that's okay. Did I already trade here? Oh, we can sell a bunch of cacao. That's great. We'd also pick up Sailors. So with Sailors... Sailors are not required by your um, commercial ships because all your ships will always have enough sailors to, to operate themselves. Mostly these sailors that you picked up here are additional sailors used for warfare. So you don't need that on your regular commercial ships. Oh yeah, you want beer. There you go. Now I want beer. Oh man. Um, <clears throat> that's all the resources I had? Yeah. Do we want to buy some more stuff? That's, um, what do we produce over here in Andros? Grain, but not corn. Okay. Um, right, so sailors you don't really need except for military ships. Why did I pick some up right over there? Well, the interesting thing is if you go to a town and then you drop off your sailors. Oh, we're going to pick up a bunch of this. We, we really want to make sure that this is being delivered constantly to uh, Port Royal, which is going to happen, actually. Because that one trade route we set up, it's going to keep kicking up in Baracoa. It might sell some of the cocoa in Santiago for money, but then it's going to drop off a ton in Port Royal because there's always going to be demand over there. So by dropping off sailors in a town, what's going to happen is we're going to get more job seekers, more people looking for work. Fantastic, because we are going to employ that. And in fact, what's going to happen here, we're going to be dropping off these sailors right now. Oomp. And there's going to be plenty of people looking for work in town here. Uh, we are going to sell just a few. Apparently people aren't too eager for pastries right now. That's too bad because we did buy a lot of them and they're quite expensive. Uh, I can probably drop off. You know what? I'm just going to drop off all the corn. Some of it got sold at a slight loss, but it's going to make sure that Andros has got lots of corn sitting around and ready for its people to eat. All right. 
let's talk about our building situation. We've got all these workers in Andros looking for work. What are we going to do with them? So, in each town, you can produce up to seven distinct goods, which I mentioned. Each town also has four goods that they are the, the raw resources that the town can generate. These represent some sort of farming or like mining operation. So here in Andros, we can get grain, or bricks, so basically clay is what we're extracting, cacao, and metal. In addition to that, we can set up additional businesses, which is already set up. For example, here in Andros, you all, someone's already set up a beer business. This takes grain and turns into beer. It's a perfect business because we already have grain over here. Other thing that could work well here is, I believe, ceramics get made from clay. So if you've got brick production, you can set up ceramics here uh, very organically, and that works out great. And then, of course, there's the raw resources. So um, we would actually potentially like some metal production here because metal is used in some household construction. Mostly it's wood and brick, but some things do need metal. So what might what might we set up in Andros as a business? Well, I kind of like the idea of getting in on this beer industry a bit. Let's start by actually setting up some grain farms, which seems like a good idea, especially since we actually don't currently have the license to build a brewery. This is something we need to specifically get from our Viceroy. Now, we've got tons of fame points, and fame points is how you get concessions, so we can easily unlock the ability to do the brewery. But let's, you know, one step at a time. So let's go into the build screen. Let's go into businesses, and let's set up some extra cropland here for some grain. Now, what we get here is a hex map, and there are different areas. These hexes, actually, there's no bright green hexes to show off at all, is there? Oh, right over here. Because um, I was going to say, these gray hexes... There's something negative about them. And the thing is that farming and mining operations upset people living in houses. You know, farming is stinky and noisy, so these people don't like it. So these gray spots are not ideal for this. This green spot is, and the reason is, there's a brewery here already. So there's a brewery here. When I mouse over the brewery, it's saying it's, it's getting a bonus because it's near someone's house, right? Uh, or uh, Industries like to be near houses because they can get workers. And industries also like to be near the source of their raw products. So this brewery will become more efficient because it's got a granary near it. Now, as soon as I put one of these down, one of these croplands, more green circles will arrive. And the reason for that is croplands, if you have four of them connected together, they get a 10% efficiency boost. So generally speaking, you tend to build your farms in clusters of four. You can see that this needs 40 workers. It also needs wood and bricks to produce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap down, not too close to the town, I'll go on the other side. Right over here, how about um, here and and over here. I'm going to make a group of four of these croplands and look to get it built up. These things are short on logs. They need logs to build, and unfortunately, Andros does not produce logs. So where can we get some of those? If I hold down Alt, we can do a little bit of squint mode looking. Oh, actually, where do we get logs near here? Oh... <gasps> Okay, Tortuga, it's an English town. Oh, Crooked Island! Crooked Island's got some. All right, well, let's go ahead and get a trade license here. Still only 10,000, that's good. And we still have one fleet that's not busy. Mm, do I just want to set up a trade between those two? For now, let me create a trade route. This is probably going to be temporary. But your job, you're in Andros, go to Andros, then Crooked Island. Um, in Andros, do just your normal stuff. In Crooked Island, we're going to do this. But what I might do is request we are pretty aggressive with it. I don't know. I still don't want to buy it a loss. You know what? It's fine. Theoretically, there should be some cheap wood available in uh, Crooked Island. And there will definitely be a demand in Andros. So there should be some purchases over there. We might go and make some adjustments as to where this thing is running later on, but that's going to be A-OK. -okay. We did have a little star here by Barakoa. It's got a town task. This town is asking that I deliver 75 cloth to it. Now, that means, first of all, there's going to be demand for cloth over here, so I, I can probably sell it at a profit. Secondly, if I deliver all 75, what's going to happen is I'm going to complete this task and I'll get some sort of bonus. One thing I'm going to do is it's going to give me some fame, which is nice because that can lead me to the next fame point. The other thing is it'll probably give me a tactic or something that I can use in battle later on. Take a look at our little fleet here that's going to Crooked Island. Hopefully, if all goes well, it's going to pick up some wood and return. Sell some resources. It Only six logs, unfortunately. 
um but probably other things there are other independent traders so the blue flag with the the barrel is me but you're gonna see other ships there oh right over there just disappeared i am running on very high speed here um there's another one over there these are merchants so english merchant there were some uh dutch merchants a second ago and they will move things between these islands as well they won't necessarily do with as much gusto as you do um and so you know it's very important that you're still doing it plus this way you get some more control here five more logs it's not much but it's something we'll get over there what we might want to do is wouldn't it be great to expand Crooked Island's wood industry? Oh, that sounds lovely. Let's go to the construction menu. Let's go to businesses. Let's go to sawmill. And why can't I click here? Well, it's because I don't have building permission for Crooked Island. Building permission is a whole other button. Now, I can buy it on Crooked Island right now for 25000 But hopefully, let's take a look at Barracoa. No. Am I get, can I build it everywhere right now? I've been too successful with my fame. Um... Let's say we're going to want to trade with the Grand Bahama at some point. Probably. They, they produce a lot of goods. Let me buy a trading license here. I cannot buy a business license here in Grand Bahama. And the reason is I need to increase my fame. You generate fame by selling the town stuff it needs. Anything where it's fill level, the, the green bars here, anything it's less than two green. So grain is less than two green. It's literally zero green. So if I brought grain to Grand Bahama, I would get more fame. Fame hits 100%, you're allowed to build businesses there. It doesn't take long. Once you get, you have any kind of trade going, it's it's going to do the job for you, but there it is. Let's go and make a little change here. This Andros to Crooked Island, let's throw another step in here where it goes back to Andros, then Grand Bahama. Um, this will give extra time for Crooked Island to rebuild its wood reserves, and we can probably get some good money in Grand Bahama, and then later on, maybe we can get a building license over there if we want. Speaking of building licenses, though, oops, firm. Okay. Speaking of building licenses in Crooked Island, I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. I'm not gonna leave us with a bunch of money, but I think it's worth it. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There's 44 unemployed people in Crooked Island, so we're going to build a sawmill and try to expand that. Um, everything is just gray. There's no bonuses anywhere. I don't think the sawmill cares about being near anything. Later on, we might want to have it near um, a business that uh, tool makers would be good and things that use wood would be okay. Let's just tuck it in. You know what? Right over here. I'll build one. How's it doing brick wise? Oh, it's actually working already. They had enough bricks stored up. Let me build a second one like that. This one's short 14 bricks. It should get delivery of it at some point because, of course, Andros makes bricks and we do have trade going back and forth between these two. Um, and that what we've just done basically is created demand for bricks in Crooked Island. So our little trade ship will almost certainly bring some at some point or one of the independent traders will deliver the job as well. So things are going to move around. We've got a military fleet over here. You can see all the, uh, the green pips are filled out for relative strength. Very strong fleet. Just patrolling around. But again, we're not at war right now, right? Nope. Peace reigns throughout, which is, I guess, good for us. No pirates. Could go and get some concessions. In fact, let's go ahead and, first of all, we're going to unlock the captain's light. This will make captains become available to us from time to time. Um, I think what we'll do... Uh, what do we want to unlock first? Well, we can do brewing in Andros, so, and who doesn't want beer? Let's go and unlock the brewery license. So now we can build our own breweries once we get some money. Actually, we've got a bit uh, banked up. Um, so, actually, all of our crops are going. That's good. How's our population? We have no workers right now. Well, let's do something about that. I'm going to go and get another vessel. We're going to go shopping for a vessel in Port Royal. What do you want? You got a mission. Ooh, half price for freshly built vessels. Interesting. Well, that could be handy. There are still some vessels for sale, including another one of these flights. I can also order one. If I want to order from scratch, 20 grand. Yeah. We have to wait 19 days. And they need the material to be available. Is there another one we don't do? Well, there's military ships as well. Might be a little early for that. Okay. Let's get that order placed. So zoom out. There's actually an interesting feature here. Um, the speed scales based on your zoom. If you zoom out, it actually goes even faster than three times game speed. 
because you know you're you've got this overhead view you want to watch things go fast whereas if you zoom in then it goes back to well it's gonna say normal speed but it's still on three times it's still three times game speed but you know if it was at the full multiple speed it would be things would just be warping through the screen you wouldn't be able to see it so it scales the speed to something that's reasonable here and reasonable here i don't think i've ever seen a game do that before it's kind of brilliant uh, and at first i was like oh i don't know the, the you know automated behavior i'm always kind of nervous about it works wonderfully here it's just swell so um objectives we did create complete some objectives for free here so these are tasks if you were playing in the campaign these would be campaign sort of driven objectives and as you completed some it would advance the order of the overall plot here we're playing in free play but i still ask for objectives because i like a little bit of extra structure and goals um so we've completed making money from trade uh andros is satisfied which is great next point we need to plunder some trading convoys Construct eight large shipyards. That's going to be pretty intense because that's going to require that we're the administrator of eight different towns. Well, let me pause temporarily here. Complete in Port Royal. Um, I don't even remember what that was. Um, oh, it was maybe building a ship. Uh, we need to have 8,000 workers employed. That will happen in time. An objective is the game over here. Find all nine statues with treasure maps. Annex four towns. That would be a warfare thing. Own 120 production buildings. This is a long time coming. But, oops. You can, in fact, get treasure maps from completing quests on the main map that will pop up from time to time. The same little exclamation mark that sort of that I just saw in uh, Port Royal. It's something like stuff like that that can lead to treasure maps. And they can lead to statues, which give you fame. You can also get tactics from uh, completing quests, which will be useful later in battles. A captain has shown up. Level 3 captain, available right away. Lillian Van Boer. Helmsman, which increases speed at sea. That's really useful, even if we're not using her as a military person. I'm going to go ahead and hire her right away, actually. And we'll assign her to some sort of fleet. I might assign her to my new fleet. I don't know. We will see. All right. Things are still going over here. Oh, Andros has a complaint. Insufficient living space. All right. So, Andros... 100% of its houses are currently used, which is going to lower satisfaction, which is no good. We need some extra living. We can build town buildings in Andros because we are the administrator of this town. So we can do that. Now, obviously, the, the most obvious way to increase the housing of your town is to build more houses. You can see we even have some green areas over here. These two places are near a market, so there'll be higher satisfaction. This place over here is near a farming field, which displeases it, but it's also near a tavern and a chapel, which makes it happier. Uh, actually, it doesn't make it happier. The market is in green. It makes it happier. The tavern and the chapel increase how many people can live in these houses, basically. Increases your population density, which makes taverns and chapels incredibly powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a house there. Um, It's got to wait for five pieces of metal to be delivered. Okay, that'll probably be enough because that's going to add 240 housing. Now... Only about a quarter of your actual population can be workers because, you know, you've got children, you've got elderly people, you've got, you know, invalids, you've got people who are doing, you know, non, you know, craft making kind of jobs kind of thing. So a quarter of your population will be a regular available workforce. So do any of these towns produce metal goods? I think right over here, Puerto Padre. So theoretically, some trade might happen. We've got another captain available. We're going to wait on that. Santiago wants that cloth. Yeah, we're not really set up for that. Wessel nearly done. Wait, is it finished? Oh, it is actually finished. Never mind. Let's go make a convoy out of you. We can assign a captain to you. Uh, sorry, I'm not hiring you. I'm assigning this one. We can only have one captain right now. The Lillian Van Boer, so she's going to be faster. What I'm going to do here is I will grab a bunch more sailors once again. I'm also going to grab some metal. Now, it's a little expensive here. Grab like 20 units of metal to make sure to deliver it um, in Andros so that we can build a few things that we want to build. Uh, we don't need beer because we do produce it over there already, but we'll grab some sugar. Um, and we don't need grain because we put it there as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to manually send this fleet up to Andros. So the metal should help us complete the housing. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready and put down another house request as well. I mean, I guess if they're going to be happy here, I'll put it down there. And that's going to be okay. Yeah, metal is short. All right, where is it? Right over there. This one. The 
Kaluch. Boom, boom, boom. Delivering that. What we're going to do is we're going to go into trade screen. Uh, we'll dump off sugar and make a fair amount of cash doing that. Or down around there, maybe. Um, some rum. Or down around there. And then I'm going to drop off all the metal. Even though it's going to oversupply. Now the town's actually got quite a bit of it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to buy a ton of cacao here. Excellent. Oh, and I'm going to drop off those sailors. Hopefully they'll have somewhere to live. And that's going to be good. Okay. Well, what's my timer at? Oh, we are way over putting a cut. So we're going to go and put a cut in here. Woo, that was a long episode. Um, and the next episode we're going to do is we're going to continue to expand our businesses. And at some point, at some point, there is going to be some war that breaks out. Or pirates are going to start showing up. At some point, we're going to have to build a bit of a military fleet and look at the combat. I actually quite like the combat. You can automate the combat. Um, you can also uh, play through it. It's excellent little tactical combat. That's actually quite a lot of fun to do with lots of special little tricks and things that are available. Thank you very much for watching. Again, this is a sponsored video. Check the information down in the description box for uh, more information about the game as well as where you can pick it up. And I'm going to see you guys next time.